Representative Earhart, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. I'm happy to be here. Many viewers will see you as a familiar face around the House of Representatives. Why did you decide to run for political office? Well, I was first elected in uh, 1990, took office in 91, served in the minority for eight years, and then eight years in the majority, and then back to the minority. During the time I was in the majority, I was uh, chair of the property tax uh, committee when we made some landmark changes in the property tax system. And once that was accomplished, I moved along to chair of the uh, Transportation Policy Committee. And uh, matter of fact, I turned that into the uh, uh, Finance Committee for the transportation system. And we passed a couple of very large transportation uh, bills. 2005 was vetoed. And uh, there was also a piece in there that the Governor Plenty couldn't veto, which was the uh, transfer of the motor vehicle excess tax in, from the general fund into the transportation fund. And uh, after passing that, uh, uh, the transportation community got together and, and pushed that through the 2006 uh, It had to be voted on because it was a Constitutional Amendment, and, and it was successfully passed. And then we came back in 2007 and tried again. He vetoed that uh, bill mm -hmm. as well, even though the bridge had fallen down. And we thought, well, as enough was enough. And so in 2008, I was in the minority then, but uh, the Democratic Party thought enough of my skills to make me vice chair of the Finance Committee. And from there, uh, we uh, took six bold Republicans. I led them in an override of the Governor Pawlenty's veto, and we made a successful effort there. And so now we have uh, a good chunk of transportation funding in place. They're building the central quarter on the uh, monies that came out of that and the uh, tax uh, dedicated funds that, for transit that we passed and other money. So that was a big advance for the transportation uh, problems of this state, although it wasn't nearly what we needed. We needed probably, uh, that was probably about a third. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, having been uh, defeated in 2008, in a three-way race, because the uh, Republican Party turned their back, put an X on my forehead and said, be gone, and wouldn't endorse me. So from there, we went to uh, sit on my hands for a while. And then there was an opportunity after redistricting to uh, take another uh, run at, uh, at being uh, representing the area again, which is Edina. And, uh, the people concurred that I might have some energy and spark and good thoughts for uh, uh, more good government policies, and so they sent me back here. Many people your age begin to think about changing gears, but you decided to run for political office. Can you tell us what made you want to return to the House of Representatives? Well, I was kind of a neutral. I didn't really change gears for a couple of years there. and. Um, I would say uh, that I, I was probably one of the three most knowledgeable people about the transportation system that were in the legislature. One was uh, Senator Murphy, and one was uh, Representative Leader, and myself. And I don't know that they have those skills available at the time. Plus, I was a little bit uh, disappointed in what the uh, current crop of, I think maybe a lot of them came in in 2010, uh, I, I have some respect for the institution and I thought they are kind of ripping it up and they don't know what they're doing and they're not really getting things done. And I thought after looking at the roster of people that are running, I think there were about eight or nine uh, former legislators that came out of the woodwork and said, we got to set this thing straight. And I think most of them were elected. So I'm one of those that thought, 
hey, I've got something to offer yet, and uh, so let's do it. Well, you were named chair of the House Transportation Policy Committee, and you've already talked about issues you took on last time that you were here at the House of Representatives, but what issues are you looking forward to taking on this legislative session? Well, I'm still interested in uh, uh, financing of transportation, and uh, it may be, uh, may be that my talents were steered in the wrong direction, but I certainly hope to have a say in the transportation policy. I'm also, uh, with the experience I've had on the uh, tax committee, I think we'll be re restructuring the taxes. And uh, of course, there's going to be a, an effort to balance the budget, which we should do structurally, balance the budget. And uh, in my, in, in a dyna, a very important issue has always been K-12. We do need an improved funding for K-12 that's on a consistent basis. Do you feel like there was any unfinished business with your past legislative experience that you now want to see addressed? Well, the transportation thing, of course, we only got about a third of what we needed in that bill. That's about all that, we, that uh, the legislature could stomach at that time. We needed, uh, we had uh, about $6 billion in taxes and bonding in that bill. And uh, as it turns out, uh, and we knew at the time that we needed three times that. Uh, but that was all that we could get buy-in because it was, it was a previous 20 years before they had raised the gas tax and done any of the rest of it. And they had never had a dedicated source for transit. And meanwhile, uh, this area was falling by behind the rest of the uh, uh, comparable cities who were moving ahead with transit. And it's very important uh, for the business community that we do our roads, bridges, and transit so they can get people to back and forth uh, to work for the transit and so that they can get goods to market and patrons to buy them. Having spent 18 years in the legislature as a Republican, what will it be like for you to now be part of the DFL caucus? Well, I've always been very independent, and I've been a centrist, and I used to work with the Democrats all the time and also work with the Republicans. And if you're a real purist, of course, as some of the uh, Republicans were, obviously they wouldn't uh, support me because uh, in 2008, because I had overridden the governor, for good cause, I think. Um, and uh, I, I wasn't alone in that, I, but I did do the leading of the, the uh, override six, as they're called. Um, in the center, you know, you work with both sides, and that's where things get done. It's not the extremes left and right. They can sit out there and holler all they want, but when, a, when the day is finally arrives, you got to get together in the middle and say, you get some of this and we get some of that and then uh, let's make up our minds that we'll not everybody be happy, but we'll get the job done and we move the state ahead. This is democracy and, you know, we've got uh, 201 legislators here, all from different areas of the state, all with different ideas, and you got to talk about them and, and move uh, ahead on the basis that Look, we'll, we'll, we'll not everybody get what they want here, but we'll take some of this and some of that, and we'll get something done. You have lived in Edina for 40 years. What does it mean for you that the people in Edina re-elected you, even though you switched parties? And can you talk about the trust they have placed in you? Well, I think it's a high degree of trust. Now, I know that the, the hard R's that never do anything else Never think besides, besides Republican thoughts. We're, we had a very difficult time of, of uh, voting for me, but some of them did, but not most of them. That, and there's that segment. So, but there are a lot of people who are out there who are inclined to uh, uh, ticket splitters, as some people call them. Uh, they're very apt to uh, look at the measure of the person. And in my case, of course, I'm a, I was a known factor. They, uh, many times at the door, 
they would say, well, I don't always agree with you, but you try and find the right answer, and you're, you're a centrist, you're a moderate. And so uh, that, that was important, that long history, even though I was missing for four years. Well, thank you again, Representative Earhart, for taking the time to sit down and talk to us.